From this products component, currently we are returning this H1 element. Now let's say along with this H1 element, we also want to return a paragraph element. Here let's say this is product description. Now you will notice that here we have this red squiggly indicating that here we have an error. And we have this error because in React we can only return one element at a time. But here we are trying to return two elements. First this H1 element and then this paragraph element. And that's why we have this error. Now remember that behind the scenes when we are returning this JSX code, behind the scenes React will use this react dot create element method to create that element okay but when we return only one element at that time this create element method knows that it has to create that element so for example if we remove this paragraph element from here here this create element knows that it has to create one h1 element but when we have more than one elements which we are returning in that case, this method does not know which element to create. And because of this, React does not allow us to return more than one HTML element at a time. However, we can resolve this problem by wrapping the HTML elements which we want to return within a container element. So for example, we can wrap these two HTML elements within a div. Like this. Let me cut this closing div from here and let's use it here. So now this create element will create one HTML element which is this div and this div is containing this h1 element and this paragraph element. So within that div this paragraph element and this h1 element will also get created. Okay so we have this h1 element and this paragraph element within this div. So here we are not returning three elements. We are returning only one div element. So behind the scenes, this create element method will be used and it will create this div element. And this div element will have this H1 element and this paragraph element. So if I go ahead and save the changes, if you go to the web page, you will notice that an H1 element and a paragraph element has been rendered here. Now, if I open developer console and if we go to the elements tab here you will notice that this h1 element and this paragraph element is rendered within a div and it is the same div which we are returning from here okay so this create element method has created this div and inside that div this h1 element and this paragraph element has also been created now here instead of div you can also use span and this will also work. So now if we go to the web page, now you will notice that now we have a span here and inside that span, this H1 element and paragraph element has been rendered. Another very important thing which you need to remember is that when you are returning JSX code with more than one line, you should wrap it within parenthesis like this. Now why this is required? That's because JavaScript has a feature called as implicit semicolon insertion. That means sometimes what JavaScript do is when it finds a new line and if that new line is not ending with a semicolon, it will implicitly insert a semicolon after that. So for example, let me move this to a next line. Now here what will happen is after this return keyword, JavaScript will implicitly insert a semicolon. So if I save the changes and if I go to the web page, we don't have anything in the web page. That's because now we are not returning anything. JavaScript has implicitly inserted a semicolon here. So after this return keyword, we don't have any value. That means from this function, from this products function, we are not returning anything. And that's why this web page is empty. And that's why we say that whenever you are returning a multi-line JSX code, you should always wrap it within parenthesis so that whatever you have within that parenthesis that will be considered as a single expression. Okay, so now JavaScript will insert an implicit semicolon after this parenthesis. Now remember that JavaScript is smart enough to know 
when to insert an implicit semicolon. But just to avoid any unexpected behavior, we wrap our JSX code, the multi-line JSX code within parentheses so that we don't face any unexpected error. All right, so now what we want to do is from this products component, we want to return a product. And in order to save some time, I have already written some HTML. So let's copy this HTML from here and let's use it here. So I will remove these HTML elements and we will use the HTML which we have just copied. Now here we have this image element. And if you remember, we have learned that since JSX is just an XML, it follows the rules of XML. And in an XML, every element must have a closing tag. So here we can resolve this issue by including a slash like this. Let's provide some tab here. So if you notice from here also, we are returning only one HTML element, which is this unordered list element. Okay. Inside that we have one list, but we can also have multiple lists. As long as we are returning only one HTML element, we are good to go. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here you will notice that we have a product here. So we have this product name, we have this product description, and we also have this product price. Now, if we go ahead and duplicate this LI element here, so if I copy this and if I paste it again, now we should have two products in the web page. Okay, now these two products are duplicate. So currently, let's remove this second product from here. We will add some more products later in our future lectures. In the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's design these products using Bootstrap.